Well, welcome to another program with Dr. Charles Scott. Um, it's been a long time since we've recorded a new program, and I'm so happy to have Dr. Scott here on the set with me. And uh, I'm glad you're here with us, too. And Dr. Scott, welcome home. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure <laughs> being back. I was really looking forward to oh, the show. Wow. It's been... It's been a while, about uh, a year and a half. Yes, it's been a long now. time since you've done fresh programs. Yes. And uh, so... What are we going to do today? What I thought I would do today is uh, to kind of do a review. Mm -hmm. We have some of the uh, viewers that have been watching me for years. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we should have uh, some new viewers as well that may sure. not be familiar with my practice and how I practice. Right. So I thought it would be a good idea since it's been so long. Just recap. To just recap and give everybody an overview right. of what we do. Okay. Yeah. Let's go for it. So primarily I've been practicing in, in the Odessa area for some 30 years. And I practice holistically. So it goes by several names. Uh, the catchphrase is functional medicine. And this was primarily pioneered by German medical doctors over 50 years ago. And so when a patient comes into the clinic, I look at them holistically. So I'm not looking at just what kind of symptoms does this patient have, because I'm not there to cover up symptoms. With functional medicine, I'm trying to find the root cause of what's making them so sick. Right. Because we have patients that have been chronically sick for 10, 20, some 30 years mm -hmm. or so. And they've run the gamut. They've been to doctor after doctor, mm -hmm. and they can't find a clue as to what is wrong with them. Right. And so the Lord has really blessed me. I travel to mainland China studied with the medical doctors in China, and obtained a diplomate in acupuncture. They are well known to be cutting edge um, physicians. Well, they, have they, been. they use natural things. Yes. So when you go to a medical doctor there in China, they're primarily treating 99% of those patients with acupuncture, special diets, and herbs. Mm -hmm. Less than 1% of the time will they literally write a prescription for a pharmaceutical drug. Mm -hmm. It has to be an emergency of an some emergency. sort. An emergency. And they're not afraid to use the drugs. Uh -huh. If it's a medical emergency, uh -huh. somebody needs it to save their lives, then by all means, they'll mm -hmm. write a prescription for the drugs. Mm -hmm. But when we were there studying in the hospitals through the interpreters, the doctors would ask the patients, what do you want? Do you want Western medicine? drugs or do you want us to treat you with herbs and acupuncture mm -hmm. and probably 98 percent of the time the patient said no no we don't want drugs mm -hmm. we prefer natural therapies well it's been my experience anytime i've had drugs that i always have a reaction to them um, they always make me feel worse than i did <laughs> before I before took that them. yes and um the side effects mm -hmm. Are, are just not desirable, but with herbs and natural medicines, you don't have the side effects. You don't have the side effects, and that's what people like. I like that. And so those of you who are watching this program may not be aware of what the leading causes of death are in the United States. Number one is cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. So that's heart attacks and strokes. The yes. second leading cause of death is cancer. Do you know, Tommy, one in four Americans have cancer? One in four? One in four. Oh it, that is outrageous. And the number of young children now who are coming down with cancer is uh -huh. just phenomenal. Oh. The third leading cause of death, it used to be the fourth leading cause of death, and then a few years ago, the Centers for Disease Control moved it up to the number three spot. The third leading cause of death in the United States is prescription medication. That I don't doubt. <laughs> we're, we're not talking street drugs. Right. Like heroin, amphetamines, you know, cocaine, things mm -hmm. of that nature. These are prescription medications. The patients didn't overdose on them. They're taking them exactly as they were told to take right. them. But they're so toxic to the human body that they can cause death. Mm -hmm. 
So mm-hmm. they estimate that every year over 100,000 Americans die from drugs, from <sighs> prescription medication. Wow. So to me, that's pretty scary. It's very scary. Very, very scary. And what's so unfortunate is the patients who are taking the greatest number of prescription drugs are the elderly. Yes. They overload them with mm-hmm. drugs. Mm-hmm. Before my dad died, he was on 13 different medications. Oh, my. And many of the patients that come in, we tell them, bring us a list of the drugs that you're on. Sure. And they're on anywhere from 10 to 20 drugs. Mm-hmm. No wonder their bodies. And, and it's rebelling. Just, <laughs> yes, it's just tearing their bodies down. A lot of the symptoms that they're talking about, it's directly related to the drugs that they're taking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. And so that's why so many people now, the general public, is sick and tired of prescription medication, and they're looking for alternatives. It, is there uh, no periodical examination for what one drug is doing in your body opposed to another drug that you're taking? Do yeah, they not and people take? are getting pretty smart now because a lot of the information now is available mm-hmm. on the website. Online, yeah. So you can go to some place like WebMD mm-hmm. and plug in the drug that you're taking and it'll give you all the side effects mm-hmm. that that drug is producing right. and some of, the, some of the dangers and some of the contraindications. Mm-hmm. So when my dad's doctor retired, the new doctor that came in, that's the first thing he did, was he had my dad bring in all the drugs, and out of those 13 drugs, he says, you don't need most of these, Mr. Scott. Wow. So he took most of the drugs away, except for maybe three or four. Wonderful. And my dad started feeling a whole lot better. Yeah. After the new doctor took Mm -hmm. him off all of that medication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the others had done their damage. (laughs) Yep. And so a lot of times, the patient develops new symptoms, and automatically the doctor will re- reach for his prescription pad, and he'll start writing a prescription for another new drug. A new And they just keep adding them on, mm-hmm. on and on. Mm-hmm. Although what's happening might be a reaction to a drug they're already taking. Yes, exactly. Oh, my. Yes. And so one of the uh, revolutions in medicine happened over 200 years ago. There was a doctor, a medical doctor by the name of Samuel Hanneman. And even 200 years ago, he was appalled at the number of patients that he saw in his clinic. And most of the symptoms that these patients had were due to medicine. Mm -hmm. And so he developed a whole new system of medicine called homeopathy. Uh And homeopathy (laughs) is a whole branch of medicine in itself. And so I was blessed to study with the British Institute of Homeopathy, and I actually have a degree in homeopathy. So for those of you who are not familiar with homeopathy, what Dr. Samuel Hahnemann did, he developed a concept of like cures like. Uh So if a patient comes in and they're having extreme redness, uh, itching of the skin, Mm -hmm. the skin is breaking out, Guess what he prescribed for those patients? A homeopathic remedy made from poison ivy. Oh, wow. Isn't that amazing? It is. And so in homeopathic medicine, they will take a plant, an animal, or a mineral, and they will go through a procedure where they dilute that particular medicine until there's nothing left of the physical medicine. All that's left is electronic frequencies. Mm Mm-hmm. So the higher the, freak, the, the dilution, the stronger the, the homeopathic medicine oh, wow. is. So when you go to the health food stores, all of the health food stores now carry homeopathic medicine. Uh-huh. So you can go in there and you'll see uh, the numbers like 10X, mm-hmm. 100X, 200X. Uh-huh. So the higher the number, the more powerful the medicine is. I see. Because it's been diluted homeopathically. Uh-huh. So when he gave that homeopathic remedy of poison ivy to the people with the Skin conditions, Mm -hmm. it cleared it up completely. That is amazing. Isn't that amazing? It really is. And so what made Dr. Hahnemann and homeopathy uh, so well-known worldwide was that he adopted the principles of homeopathy to plagues that were breaking out. Really? Yes. 
cholera was one of the first ones oh, that yeah? he treated. Mm -hmm. And he developed a, a homeopathic remedy for cholera. So they did uh, medical statistics on the treatment of patients with cholera. And they found the ones that were in hospitals that were treated by traditional medicine had a death rate of somewhere around 60%. Mm -hmm. Because cholera was such a deadly disease. It was, yes. But Dr. Hanneman established homeopathic hospitals where the medical doctors did away with the drugs and they used homeopathic medicines. Mm -hmm. The death rate in the homeopathic hospitals for patients with cholera was less than 10%. Wow. And so he had did that several times in mm -hmm. his lifetime and f they found that they could treat infectious diseases and plagues with homeopathic remedies. Wow. Too bad that's not being used today on a broad scale. And in, in some parts of the world it is. Is it? Uh, India, for example, has many, many homeopathic hospitals. Uh -huh. Many of their medical doctors are homeopathic doctors. Uh -huh. okay? In uh, England, even the royal family, the royal physician has always been a homeopathic doctor. Really? Yes. I didn't. So, had no idea. So Queen Elizabeth is what, 102 she, no, or something? No, she's, she's in her in 90s, her, in though. In her 90s. Yeah. And that's all she takes is homeopathic medicine. Uh -huh. yeah. And she credits that to her, her, her good health. Well, she is in amazing health. And her husband just died at the age of 91 or 2. 91 or 2, uh -huh. yes. Yeah, so. And so even veterinarians in some of these countries use homeopathic medicine. I was watching uh, the Travel Channel and they were showing uh, the queen mm -hmm. and uh, they were loading up four or five suitcases in into the uh, chauffeur's vehicle mm -hmm. and one of the reporters ran up and asked her what that was and she laughed. She goes, those are the homeopathic remedies for my dogs. <laughs> and so when she travels with her pets, yes. they take the homeopathic remedies with them to keep them healthy. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It is. And so. In Cuba, for example, they have a disease called leptospirosis, and it's a little parasite that gets into the water supply. Right. And every year, some 10,000 or more people die from that parasitic oh infection. Oh, goodness. So they did an experiment about six years ago, and one of the medical doctors there on what's the equivalent of our Centers for Disease Control mm -hmm. is a homeopathic doctor. So she put together a homeopathic remedy made from that little parasite, from uh -huh. that worm. Uh -huh. And they distribute it throughout the island, millions mm -hmm. of doses. And for the first time in their history, less than 200 and some people died. Amazing. It was amazing. It was like 99% effective. Wow. So since then, when the rainy season comes, mm -hmm. they distribute that homeopathic medicine throughout the island of uh -huh. Cuba. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And, but unfortunately, in this country, they put together a organization whose sole job or primary job was to eliminate and contain homeopathic medicine mm -hmm. in the United States. Mm -hmm. And that organization is the American Medical Association, yeah. the AMA. Mm -hmm. So today, we don't have homeopathic hospitals in right. the United States. We don't. Most medical doctors <clears throat> know absolutely nothing about homeopathic mm -hmm. medicine. Uh, I think it's so... Uh unique. When I was young, we had a homeopathic hospital, and my mother was a volunteer in that hospital. And uh, it's amazing. Not, it didn't last too many years after I was grown. Um, the doctors died of old age, and and no one was there to step in. There was nobody to train them, mm -hmm. the new doctors. Right. And so at one time, there were 18 major hospitals and homeopathic medical schools in the United States of America. Wow. And the AMA closed every one of them down. So they were very, very effective at eliminating sure. homeopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I had to travel to Germany and, and learn it from the German medical doctors mm -hmm. that use it extensively in Germany right. and throughout Europe. Right. It's a very, very effective form of medicine and it's completely harmless. Mm -hmm. There is not one documented evidence of death from a homeopathic remedy. How is it that you are able to practice homeopathic medicine? 
Luckily for us, when the Food and Drug Administration was enacted, one of the uh, individuals, one of the medical doctors that was working with the FDA mm -hmm. was a homeopathic medical doctor. Mm -hmm. So when they passed the Food and Drug Administration bill, he snuck homeopathy in through the back door. Oh, good. So homeopathy is a recognized form of medicine by the Food and Drug Administration. So they can't outlaw it. That's why you can get them in health food stores. You can get okay. them from doctors like myself. <clears throat> but they certainly do not encourage doctors. <laughs> they don't encourage doctors to, to, mm -hmm. to learn about homeopathy. Right. right. Mm -hmm. that, that's just too bad. It is too bad. For the American public, it, yes. it's really sad. It's really sad. Really sad, it, yes. It makes their medical care cost so much more. And... Uh, be so much more uncomfortable. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh my. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what acupuncture is. Okay. Okay, because this is a form of holistic medicine. It happens to be the oldest and the largest holistic medicine in the world. It's over 4,000 years old. Wow. Okay? And so what acupuncture, in the United States, everybody calls it acupuncture. In other parts of the world, it's called traditional Chinese medicine. Uh -huh. That's what they've been practicing for thousands of years. So what the philosophy is behind that is that the body has a vital force, mm -hmm. vital energy, mm -hmm. that circulates, controls, and regulates every organ in the body. Mm -hmm. And that vital force doesn't just uh, chaotically run all over the body. Yeah. Okay, there's no chaos in the system. God created us. God created it, so there's no <laughs> chaos. So this vital energy flows through very specific pathways in the body. For example, the lung meridian starts right here at the chest, mm -hmm. runs down the outside of the arm, and then ends right up at the thumb. Really? That's the lung meridian. Uh -huh. So the Chinese, for thousands of years, when somebody comes in with uh, respiratory disease, asthma, bronchitis, mm -hmm. chronic cough, they would treat acupuncture points on the lung meridian in order to restore health into the body. Mm -hmm. And then the doctors would give them Chinese herbs that would help to restore the function of the uh -huh. lungs uh -huh. in the human body. Isn't that amazing? How, how did they ever find out where the meridians were to different organs? And that, that is a great question, and to this day, Nobody really knows uh -huh. how they have different theories as as, as mm -hmm. to how that happened. Mm -hmm. But I recently, think people were wiser. <laughs> you know, much much wiser. Cl closer to creation, they were much wiser. Because some of these herbal remedies, Chinese herbal remedies that uh -huh. we use, they're over four hundred years old, uh -huh. and they've been used repeatedly. And so there's so much to learn from an ancient form of medicine like yes. this. In the Chinese hospitals, they start experimenting with the reishi mushroom. It's a medicinal mushroom. Mm -hmm. They gave it to patients that were chronically coming into the hospital with bronchitis and pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And to everyone's amazement, the reishi mushroom healed those patients of chronic bronchitis and pneumonia. <laughs> and so it's done routinely now. Anytime somebody mm -hmm. comes in with pneumonia or bronchitis into one of the hospitals, they put them on reishi mushrooms along with other Chinese herbs. How do you spell that? R-E-I-S-S-H-I, -S reishi. Okay. And so reishi mushrooms at one time were the sole proprietary herbal medicine for the royal families in China. Really? Nobody else, the commoners couldn't get them. And get them. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how they were so prized and highly regarded mm -hmm. that they restricted it to the royal families. Mm -hmm. Of course, today now, the general public has access to yes. all of these medicinal herbs. Yes. And so, it may sound uh, like hocus pocus. Some patients think, well, it's just quackery. How could vital force or energy yeah. flow through the body and specifically through specific pathways? Uh -huh. But we know Today, it has been scientifically validated. And so, you can Google Dr. Fritz Pop, P-O-P-P. -P. Dr. Alfred Fritz Pop 
was a primary researcher. And his research brought us into the 20th century with regards to acupuncture. Mm -hmm. As what he found was what is actually circulating through those acupuncture meridians is pure photon energy. And photons are smaller than protons, neutrons, and electrons. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? It is. Okay. And so this is, this is a medical laser. It's been cleared by the Food and Drug Administration. Uh -huh. It operates at a very, very specific wavelength. So this is not a pointer like you can get an, at an office right. supply store. It's a medical instrument. Uh -huh. So I'm not going to shine it in anybody's face. I'm not going to shine it into the cameras because it's a very powerful laser. Uh -huh. I'm just going to shine it right there on my uh, hand. And hopefully you can see that on the TV screen. See it right there? Uh -huh. And this is what we treat acupuncture points with now. Oh. Okay. So not a needle. We don't have to use needles. That's ne what Needles is, is an outdated method of acupuncture. Uh -huh. So we can use photon energy to activate these acupuncture points. That's a totally and, and, amazing. Yes. And, and Dr. Poff actually had a vision about this. He was at, a, at an astronomer's uh, laboratory and uh -huh. they were looking through a massive telescope and he saw a brilliant flash of light, and he goes, wow, what was that? And his astronomer's friend told him, you just saw a star that died and exploded. Uh -huh. And it probably took thousands of years for that light energy to travel to your eye uh -huh. for you to see it. Uh -huh. And so a couple of days later, Dr. Pop actually saw that in a vision, but he saw it happening in the human body. So he put together a, a real large research team and they took a group of cells and they had a small group of cells that were programmed to die at a certain time, like 90 days or 120 mm -hmm. days. And they watched the cells under a very powerful electron microscope. And on that very day they were programmed to die, all of those cells exploded with a brilliant flash of light. Really? Photon energy. And that's where Dr. Pop discovered what photon energy was. Uh -huh. It's pure light energy. And what he wow. saw in the microscope amazed him because all of the surrounding cells that were still living literally <laughs> sucked up the, that light. Really? Went into the cells. Uh -huh. And he could see under, with the electron microscope that those cells became more alive and vibrant. Uh -huh. And so that happens in our bodies 24-7. They estimate we have 40 trillion cells in our body and every one of those cells is pulsating with photon energy uh -huh. that God put into our bodies. That is just Isn't amazing. That amazing. It is. So Dr. Pop started researching laser therapy because uh -huh. it was brand new at that time. And he found that the laser is pure photon energy. Uh -huh. And so all of these acupuncture points that the Chinese have been talking about for thousands of years are literally points of entry for photon energy into the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's, uh -huh. it's like Star Trek medicine. It is, yes. And so we're able to, to take an ancient healing art and science like acupuncture and merge it with the technology and science that we now know right. in order to benefit humanity. That is awesome. So it's so awesome to be able to be a part of this because mm -hmm. if the Lord hadn't blessed me with my being able to travel to China and, and Germany to oh, study, I probably right. would have never become familiar with, with this type of healing. Right. Are you able to keep up with that kind of um, education that they? I, I am have? because I'm I'm constantly uh, doing research uh -huh. and looking at uh, a lot of the research now. You can actually find it at the Library of Congress. Oh. And so they're doing. Uh, clinical studies mm -hmm. with things like acupuncture, laser therapy, mm -hmm. and they're publishing it. So you can go, as, as the general public, you can go in and access mm -hmm. this information under the National Library of Congress. That's awesome. So it is. Because I'm, right now I'm not able to travel back to, uh, to Germany or China. Uh -huh. With the current situation, I, I don't foresee I'll ever go back to China mm -hmm. because they're, they're under complete control of the Communist oh, government, yes. right. and then they've unleashed this uh, pandemic on the world. Mm -hmm. So, it's one of the last places um, 
I want to be at physically. <laughs> For sure. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. And so this acupuncture system of medicine is extremely effective. It and is. in the next segment, we're going to cover some of the medical conditions that we've been able to successfully okay. treat with That's a combination of acupuncture, uh -huh. herbs, <laughs> nutrition, and homeopathy. Mm -hmm. And you, you have these services. You, you have moved your official office from Odessa to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yes, my wife and I moved to Albuquerque approximately two years ago. Uh -huh. But I still come to this area. I was Odessa. hoping to come in every two weeks or so, but because of COVID, it's kind of shut a lot of that down. Right. So last month, I was only here one, one uh -huh. day out of the whole month. Mm -hmm. This this month we're hoping to be here at least twice. Okay. Twice this month. Yeah. Get back on your regular schedule. Get on a regular but schedule. What kind What kind of uh, services do you provide in Albuquerque for this, uh, like the uh, acupuncture um, that you're talking the about? The same services that I have provided here in Odessa for the past thirty years. Yes. So it's a combination of uh, nutrition, clinical nutrition, mm -hmm. homeopathy acupuncture, laser therapy, all of that we've incorporated into the Albuquerque treatment or, uh -huh. as well. Good. So that's available in Albuquerque and it's available out here in Odessa. Okay. So. Wonderful. And they'll put the uh, phone numbers up there as well okay. as the clinic name. Mm -hmm. And you can always contact me through my email. Okay. Dr. Scott, S-C-O-T-T, -T, 432 at gmail.com. Okay. Because pretty much every morning I'll open up my email and, and look to see if patients are, are calling to ask questions right. and things of that nature. So I'll respond through the email. Okay. So that's one of the quickest and best ways to get a hold of me. Mm -hmm. uh, what on, on your uh, email address, is it case sensitive or? Do it's all small, no, no oh. capitals. DR Scott. DR Scott 432. Okay. At gmail.com. Okay. And the name of our new clinic in Albuquerque is Alivio Health Center. Alivio is A-L-I-V-I-O. And Alivio is Spanish for relief. Uh-huh. Okay. So that's my main goal, is to bring relief to some of these chronically sick and hurting patients. Amen. I know it always has been your goal to take care of those people and, I'm, and and i encourage you if you've got a chronic problem go see dr scott uh, it is amazing what they can do at that clinic to make you feel better to to get you healed literally healed and i um I speak from experience. I think I've been one of these patients since maybe 98. Yep, you're one of our long-term uh, patients. So uh, I highly recommend that if you've got a problem, you go. Thank you. We'll see you next segment. Thank you, GLC contributors, for making the preceding program available. We believe that GLC's unique message to the church plays a vital role in the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. We welcome you to join us financially in carrying forth the message. Together, we can do this. Well, welcome back to our second segment with Dr. Scott today. Um, we're covering... I guess Chinese natural medicine. Natural, and, and, holistic medicine yes, and therapies. Uh, things that the Chinese have developed. And, and uh, not everything Chinese is undesirable <laughs> because this is very effective, time proven. And Dr. Scott spoke in the last segment mainly about acupuncture. And uh, he's got some more information mm -hmm. in this segment. Dr. Scott? And so in this country here in the United States, most people go to an acupuncturist for pain control, mm -hmm. treatment of pain. 
the patients that go to see the Chinese medical doctors there for acupuncture in China and other parts of the world, they're going there for internal medicine uh -huh. because they can treat all of the internal organs of the body. They can treat conditions like asthma, uh -huh. allergies, heart conditions, liver conditions, kidney disease with acupuncture uh -huh. and herbs. Uh -huh. But pain is a very important issue, a major problem. So much so that today we have so many people that are now addicted to narcotic medication yes. in order to cope with their pain. Uh -huh. And so years ago, there were two brilliant researchers, uh, Melzack and Wall, who looked into the theory of pain, how it works, and how to control it. And so what they found was that these nerve pathways carry information, literally pain signals from the body mm -hmm. up the spinal cord to the brain and back. Mm -hmm. So they literally came up with a little medical instrument called a TENS unit, mm -hmm. T-E-N-S. Mm -hmm. And TENS stands for transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. So they would put these TENS instruments on patients. They put it on their neck, their shoulders, elbows, wherever they were hurting. Wherever they're hurting. And they put little patches on there and then turn the little machine on. And those electrical impulses literally blocked the pain signals from getting to the brain. Wow. Isn't that amazing? It is. And in some patients that have such intractable chronic pain, they had to resort to implanting those TENS units inside their body. Wow. So they would cut them open and then put the little TENS unit next to the spine mm -hmm. and they would put what they were hoping were permanent batteries that wouldn't mm -hmm. go weak or else they'd have to keep opening them up yeah. and putting new batteries in there. And some of these patients miraculously were able to go off their narcotic medications. Wow. But you don't have to have a surgical implant. TENS units are so in demand now you can literally go online and purchase a TENS mm -hmm. unit. So they used to cost you $400 or $500. Now you can get them for under $50 mm -hmm. on Amazon.com and some of these other wow. internet places. So somebody came up with a brilliant concept of if since TENS works so great with alleviating pain, acupuncture works so well with alleviating pain, why can't we merge mm -hmm. TENS and acupuncture? Okay. And that's what they've done. How did they do that? So this right here is an acupuncture instrument that has a little TENS machine in it. You're kidding. No. And so this that's is, in, small. Addi in addition to the laser, this is what I use for pain control on patients instead of a needle. Oh. So I can locate the acupuncture point and then put a little bit of electrical stimulation into the point. It does the same thing as a needle without the pain or the risk of infection. Without breaking the skin. And without breaking the skin. Yeah. And so I'm able to treat children because yes. they're not scared of me. They know mm -hmm. I'm not going to stick them full of needles. Yeah, right. I tell you what, uh, if you have a, a, like neuropathy, yes. the nerves are so sensitive you cannot stand needles. So something like that is miraculous. It is. That and the laser. Mm -hmm. for, for something like neuropathy. Right. Wow. And so one of the things that I have treated now for over 26 years is allergies. Mm -hmm. With a combination of chiropractic adjustments, acupuncture, and homeopathy. Mm -hmm. And so allergies are, are phenomenal. And I first got into allergies when my wife was pregnant with our daughter because she developed severe migraine headaches mm -hmm. and they were incapacitating. And something in my spirit told me it's got to be allergies, but I didn't know anything about allergies at that time. Mm -hmm. This was over 24 years ago. Yeah. And so I found a doctor in Los Angeles whose specialty was allergy treatment. And this lady doctor is a genius. She's a registered nurse. She's a chiropractor. She's an acupuncturist, and then she went back to school and got her medical degree. Okay. So she's a brilliant she doctor. covers doctor, it all. Dr. Nimbruti Pot. So I flew out to Los Angeles and studied with her, uh -huh. and she taught me her allergy elimination technique. 
Okay. So when I flew back from Los Angeles that weekend, my wife was having a massive migraine headache. And I had purchased a, a test kit from, from Dr. Nambruti Pot, so I was able to test my wife. Turned out she was allergic to the neonatal vitamins that her doctor oh had boy. given her. Taking them every day. And taking them every day. Uh-huh. And so she was getting migraines almost daily. Mm-hmm. And so I treated her for the allergy to those vitamins. And within half an hour, her migraine completely went away. Wow. So I told her to wait a day or two because I was, had to reprogram her immune system. Mm-hmm. Then she was able to take the neonatal vitamins. And guess what? No more migraine headaches. Okay. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. So yeah. a lot of these allergies um, will disrupt people's lives. Oh, absolutely. And the traditional medical treatment for allergies many times just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So with this combination of homeopathy and acupuncture and herbs, we're able to literally reprogram the immune system and eliminate the allergies. That's wonderful. So I think it was about three weeks ago, Tommy, I literally thought I had come down with COVID. That's how bad I felt. Uh-huh. I had no energy. Yeah. I was aching all over. And uh, I, so I had my wife, Susan, test me. And guess what? I was allergic to coffee. You're kidding. And I had been allergic to coffee in the past. And so I had her do an allergy treatment on me for the coffee. And within a few hours, all of my symptoms were gone. That's severe. That's severe. So some of these allergies can really uh, put you in bed and you're bedridden. They can. Some of these allergies literally can cause death. Oh, my. Yes. So you can be allergic to just about anything under the sun. Yes. And and it it seems that they're so irrational that um, you never suspect you're allergic to something that that it might be what's causing you to that have be some the kind cause of, of all of your mm-hmm, problems. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So wow. you can even get allergic, like my wife did to vitamins. Mm-hmm. You can get allergic to minerals that are essential for your life. That's right. So we had a patient that I uh, that was coming on a regular basis, and then I didn't see her, and she came in three months later, and she said, "Dr. Scott, I thought I would never see you again." I go, "What happened?" She goes. I literally died in the hospital here in Odessa. They had to take the defibrillator Uh and get my heart going. I go, what caused it? She said, I was allergic to iodine. Oh, my. So my family insisted that I go in for an angiogram. That's where they take a dye, put it into the vein so they can see the Mm -hmm. uh, coronary arteries Mm -hmm. of the heart. And it contains iodine. Ah. And her heart stopped. Oh, my goodness. So when she came to in the intensive care unit and she asked the nurse, what happened to me? The nurse said, I'm going to let the doctor explain it to you. So she went and got the doctor and he said, you are allergic to the iodine in the dye and it literally stopped your heart. Would there not be a way to find out if you were allergic to something like that? You would have to be treated for it, but they just don't think that you could possibly be allergic to Uh something as essential as iodine. Mm Mm-hmm. And yet we see so many patients with thyroid disease. Right. When we test them, they're allergic to iodine. Mm. Without iodine, your thyroid cannot make the hormones. Uh-huh. So once we treat the patient for these allergies and eliminate the allergies, many times the thyroid kicks in and starts working again. And then their medical doctor is able to slowly lower down their thyroid hormones. Uh-huh. That's amazing. Oh, my goodness. One of the other uh, things that I'm seeing a lot of recently since COVID is anxiety. Oh, yes. There's so much anxiety and depression Mm -hmm. going on today. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize this, but they estimate that in the United States today, there are 40 million people diagnosed with anxiety and depression. And they say it's really affecting young people. Yes. And we recently had a, a, a young patient in her 30s and her 16-year-old son committed suicide. Mm-hmm. He was just so depressed yeah. since he was house-ridden, couldn't go out with mm-hmm. his friends, couldn't mm-hmm. go to school, mm-hmm. and it, the, the depression just uh, overwhelmed him. Mm-hmm. I, I forget what the suicide rate is among young people, but it, 
it's unacceptable. It's at an all-time high. It is. Yes. And so you, th you have things like a generalized anxiety disorder that's characterized by unrealistic worry. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this type of person is always expecting the worst outcome. Right. Even if there's no evidence that something bad's going right. to go wrong. That's Oh, something's going to go wrong mm -hmm. today, you know? They're, but they allow themselves to be fed by media the worst all the time, you know. I found out many months ago uh, that I had to turn off the TV. I, did, I rarely listen to news. I don't listen to commentators. They don't have any good news. I need good news. You need good news. Good news is in the Word of God. And, so. and, and, what, and what is, what's so funny is that my wife would be watching the national news and you could hear her yelling and screaming at the TV set. Sure. And I would tell her, just turn the TV off and quit watching the news mm -hmm. and you won't get upset. <laughs> and so that's what a lot of people oh, have to do. You know, just that, That's what I had to do. Watching the mm -hmm. evening news because it, it'll drive you crazy, literally. Because they just survive to give you bad news and exactly keep, oh this is gonna this is horrible this is bad <laughs> you better watch out the boogers are gonna get you <laughs> and another condition mm. that we see all of the time is arthritis yes so many many people are coming in they've been diagnosed with uh, osteoarthritis which is a wear and tear type of arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis okay. which is an autoimmune disorder uh -huh. So something has upset their immune system, and their own immune system is now attacking the joints in their body. Uh -huh. And so traditionally, <laughs> acupuncture and herbal medicine has had great success with treating arthritis. Uh -huh. And so we utilize uh, the acupuncture, the laser treatment, uh, the Chinese herbs, and the homeopathic remedies, and we get great results with treating arthritis. Right. Arthritis is so painful. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these patients are, are in the habit of relying on over-the-counter, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Mm -hmm. And in the long run, things like Tylenol, acetaminophen, ibuprofen, they can destroy your kidneys and your liver. Mm -hmm. So you want to try to find a natural approach for your arthritis. Mm -hmm. Asthma is very prevalent among children. Is it? And over the years, we've had tremendous results. These children are no longer diagnosed with asthma. Really? Yes. I had a registered nurse years ago that brought me her eight-year-old daughter. And her asthma was so bad that she couldn't go outdoors in, at school time. Mm -hmm. She had to stay indoors while all the other kids were out playing around mm -hmm. at recess and lunchtime. Yeah. And the more medication they put her on for her asthma, the worse the asthma became. Yeah. Bless her little heart. And, and so when we tested her, we found that she had systemic candida. Uh -oh. And that's what was in her lungs. Mm -hmm. And so candida is a yeast, Y-E-A-S-S-T, -E a yeast-like fungus mm -hmm. that can travel throughout the entire body. It can oh. affect every organ in the body. Yes. It affects this little child's lungs. Oh. So once we put her on the, the natural, holistic treatment, we eliminated the candida. Guess what? Her asthma was gone. Wonderful. Yes. And it never came back. Saved her life. Yes. <clears throat> it saved her life. And, and her, when she, her mother brought her back one time, she was so happy because the little girl was able to play outdoors with mm -hmm. her playmates now. Mm -hmm. she, Be a natural little girl. That, exactly. <clears throat> and then eventually, this, her mom was a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. And so she got the medical doctor said, look, she's doing so much better. You need to wean her off all of the medication. Yes. And since she was really insistent, the medical doctor went along with it, and he took the little girl off all of the medication. Mm -hmm. Well, she didn't so need it. <laughs> I never tell patients 
to cold turkey their drugs or their medication mm -hmm. because you could die from it. Sure. You need to have your medical doctor or nurse practitioner that put you on the drug to safely Get you off. wean you off that mm -hmm. drug until mm -hmm. you no longer need it. Yeah. That's important. And so asthma doesn't have to be a death sentence. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get over something as deadly as asthma. Mm -hmm. and yet, I guess you can get over practically anything. Practically <laughs> any medical disease or condition, <laughs> if you give the body the right tools, that's how God created us. This is a self-healing, regenerating body. Isn't that awesome? And we take it for granted. We do. So, you know, if you cut yourself, you're working in the kitchen and you cut yourself, you run over to uh, wherever your little medicine cabinet is and you'll maybe put a little bit of iodine on it or some neosporin mm -hmm. to make sure an infection doesn't get in it. And then you put a Band-Aid on it or some gauze and then periodically change it and you forget about it. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of days later or a week later, you take the Band-Aid off and, oh my God, it's completely healed. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. <laughs> that's how God created our bodies. It is. And that's how it's supposed to work. But we are so overloaded with pollutants and toxins, our body doesn't have a chance to heal itself. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's why we have to intervene <laughs> with natural therapies like the acupuncture, the homeopathy, mm -hmm. specific diets and nutrition so that the body can start regenerating yeah. and healing itself. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the... Uh, the things that uh, are our body's worst enemies, you know, that are, we might be ingesting. Or that is a really good question, Tommy, because some of our worst enemies that I've seen over the 30 years or so are viruses, mm. mold and fungus, mm. like the candida. Yes. Okay. Those are the worst enemies. And then the other ones are environmental toxins that we are exposed to, right. like uh, arsenic, lead, mercury, mm -hmm. uh, pesticides, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Okay. But I think the number one worst enemy is fungal organisms. Really? Mold and fungus. Hmm. And, and they could be in very unsuspecting places. Yes. There's one fungus that's present in all of the dirt in West Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California. The entire Southwest desert has this fungus in it. So on windy days, we're all breathing it in. Oh my. So this almost killed me 30 years ago. That's when they found a huge tumor in my lungs, mm -hmm. larger than a silver dollar. Mm -hmm. The radiologist who did the CAT scan on my lungs told me and Susan, I've never seen anybody with a tumor that large in their lungs that's still walking around. Mm -hmm. And so goodness. they wanted to do, the medical community wanted to do all kinds of crazy things to me. And I said, no, thank you. I'm going to pray about it. And then I'm going to find a better way. Mm -hmm. And so one of my buddies that's a medical doctor steered me to a lung specialist, a pulmonologist, and he did some testing and he came back and told me, it's got to be fungus. Mm -hmm. So oh, we yeah. killed the fungus and that tumor completely dissolved. Wow. It's been gone for 29 years. Mm -hmm. But guess what? On windy days, I'm breathing it in again. Yeah. And <coughs> I'll start coughing again. Uh -huh. And my wife says, uh-oh, you breathed in that fungus again. Yeah. So we'll put me on a homeopathic remedy, and it's gone within a few days. Uh -huh. So I never give it a chance to Get take root hold. or hold in my yeah. body again. Yeah. Would a mask on a windy day help? Oh, yes. Uh Unfortunately, in Albuquerque, it's windier than it is here in Midland and Odessa. <laughs> so um, I really don't go outside yeah. without a mask, even before COVID, uh -huh. because I would breathe in that fungus. Mm -hmm. And probably so many people are affected with that and have no idea. They have no idea, no. And the viruses are so rampant, and one of them is Epstein-Barr virus. Uh -huh. The, the virologists, those are the scientists and doctors that specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of viruses. They call Epstein-Barr virus, EBV, everybody's virus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the Centers for Disease Control did a study and they found that nine out of 10 Americans have antibodies 
to that virus. Oh, you're kidding. So everybody has it. And if you keep your immune system healthy enough, that Epstein-Barr virus can take your body over. Mm -hmm. Because if it does, it can literally kill you. I've, I've known people who were so sick and, and later found out it was the Epstein bar. Yes. And, uh, but had no clue, and the doctors couldn't find it out what it was. You know, they went to many doctors and uh, could not get relief. And one of the common symptoms is chronic fatigue. Mm -hmm. They actually diagnosed chronic fatigue syndrome in patients that are so wiped out they can barely function in life. Yes. And when they did the studies, they found it was due to the Epstein-Barr virus. Uh-huh. But the, the homeopathic can get the body rid yes, of it. Yes, with the homeopathic remedies, the acupuncture, proper nutrition, we can inactivate that Epstein-Barr mm -hmm. virus mm -hmm. so that it's no longer making you sick. Uh-huh. Now, what the scientists tell us is that you can never completely kill a virus. You've got it for the rest of your life. Is that right? That's why individuals, they hit 50, 60 years old, and all of a sudden they've got a bad case of shingles. Mm -hmm. Extremely painful. Well, that virus has been in their body since they were a little child. That's what gave them chicken pox. Herpes zoster is the virus that caused chicken pox. Okay. Okay. So you got over the chicken pox, but you still had the virus in your sure. body. It went into a latent, L-A-T-E-N-T, -E stage where it was no longer affecting you. Mm -hmm. But guess where that virus went and rested? On your nerves. Ah. And so when it gets activated, and the primary activator for these viruses seems to be stress, stress. and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. That I'm, I'm thinking... Major problem right now is anxiety because of COVID. Are people going to be reacting? With Their bodies will react, and it's going to activate <sighs> all these latent viruses, uh -huh. including the shingles virus, mm -hmm. the Epstein-Barr virus, all the different herpes viruses mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yes. That doesn't sound good. It doesn't. Nope. Mm. And... Uh, We've had patients that, uh, that we've treated for years that had Epstein-Barr virus and some of these other problems, fungal organisms, candida, and whatnot. We got them over all of that with our holistic treatments. And unfortunately, they went and got vaccinated. And within a week, they were bedridden. All of their symptoms came back. Oh, they no. came into the clinic and all of these viruses have returned, mm -hmm. you know. I definitely do not recommend any of these vaccines mm -hmm. for the COVID mm -hmm. because it's going to completely disrupt your immune system. Oh my goodness. That is not good news. Not good news. And I have been mm -hmm. exposed to patients with COVID now at least two or three times. Mm -hmm. And every time the test came back negative. Mm -hmm. So if you keep your immune system in a healthy state, you won't succumb mm -hmm. to any of these viruses, yeah. including COVID-19. Right, right. People just don't realize how important the immune system is and how important it is to keep it healthy. And it's simple to do. It's very simple to do. And there are nutrients that you can go and purchase at the health food store. Yes. And you don't need a prescription for it. Amen. And it'll help keep your immune system mm -hmm. healthy. Mm -hmm. One of those is a mineral called selenium. Yeah. Okay. They did a study in, in mainland China. They took two groups of animals and they injected the animals with hepatitis B. So the control group was fed a selenium poor diet Every one of those animals con contracted hepatitis B oh, and really? then died from liver cancer. Oh. The group that was given a high selenium diet, the virus couldn't even reproduce in their bodies. They <laughs> never developed, they never found hepatitis B, they never developed liver cancer. Just that little selenium mineral kept the virus from replicating. 
That's amazing. So that's one of the minerals that I take religiously since COVID broke out. Sure. Is the selenium. Another one is zinc. Uh -huh. So take the selenium and zinc together uh -huh. along with vitamin C. So we don't have to be victims to these outbreaks and these pandemics right. if we keep our immune system healthy. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to keep our mental outlook healthy too. Uh, like you say, not, not being expecting the worst to happen all the time, not expecting to get sick, but praising the Lord that <laughs> He's your healer, that He's your provider, and uh, keeping that healthy yeah. outlook on life, you know, rejoicing in the Lord. One of the things the I love about traditional Chinese medicine, they never separated the, the body from the mind. Uh -huh. They've documented that emotions literally can destroy your immune sure system and your internal organs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the worst emotions is fear. And this fear is what all of the mass media is feeding. It is. With all of the bad news that they give us on a daily it basis. Is. Every day, all day. <laughs> so that's and why so I one said, of the turn it off. <laughs> biggest medical researchers was Dr. Guyton. He actually, G-U-I-T-O-N, he actually published a medical textbook that's over 1,200 pages thick. And one of the chapters was on the autonomic nervous system being activated by negative emotions. Mm -hmm. And the two worst emotions that he documented were fear and anger. Uh -huh. And when they activate that autonomic nervous system, they tear down your immune system. Yep. Every time. Dr. Scott, it's been great having you back. And... Uh, I trust that you will get in touch with Dr. Scott if you've got some chronic problem that you are just that's just tearing you up and find a simple remedy you know he, the things he has us do are not hard and they're simple and effective and Dr. Scott, it, it's just been great visiting with you again today. It's so good to have you well, back. Well, it's been a blessing. It's always great to be back, and, and, and uh, I look forward to filming more new shows. Right. Yeah. We'll see you again the next time. <laughs>